Welcome to SDVOE Live. I am your host, Justin Kennington, and this is TV for Pro AV. I am so glad you managed to join us today on this, our special end of 2020 holiday season event. Uh, what a year it's been, both for SDVOE Live uh, and for all of you. Um, I hope that you managed to, to bring some of your leftover eggnog, uh, have some of your toys open and ready to play with as you watch. Uh, this, our very special episode, not only is it a holiday episode, but it's our first one where we're bringing in a special guest. Today we'll be joined by our friend Gary Vlamic of Clearline Technologies. Uh, we're going to talk today about leveraging fiber in Pro-AV applications. Uh, so a lot of really interesting stuff to get to. Um, I also want to remind you, of course, after we wrap up the show, the half-hour show, uh, I want you all to join us for our after show. We'll loosen up our... Uh, proverbial, if not real, ties. Uh, we'll have a seat, uh, and you will be able to interact directly with me, with my co-host Matt Dodd, uh, as well as Gary, our guest, uh, and get your questions answered. And by the way, get those questions to us in the chat box, right down here on your screen, uh, or through Twitter using hashtag SDVOE Live. We'll be monitoring that throughout the show, so any comments you have on uh, my outfit here, or whatever Matt happens to be wearing, uh, send it to us in the chat or the Twitter, hashtag SDVOE live, uh, and we'll get it there. Uh, a couple of programming notes to mention. We also have a quiz uh, that's part of the show. You'll see uh, as, I, as I leave you in just a moment here to get to the rest of the show, uh, we'll bring up our first quiz question. We've got two of those coming at you uh, in the half hour. And anyone who gets both questions right uh, will be able to win a prize. Uh, we sent out some Amazon gift cards two weeks ago uh, to someone who managed to answer some questions about layer three of the network. Uh, this week, of course, our questions will be around the topics of fiber optics. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to throw this over to Matt, who's waiting in our classroom. Uh, he's going to show you the program. Uh, he's going to show you the video we have today introducing the topic of fiber optics in Pro-AV. Uh, and don't miss the quiz question on the way. Matt, what have you got? Hello, everybody. Check this out. I think I've... Uh well and truly trumped JK in the, uh, in the Christmas jumper stakes. Here it is. Uh, it says ho, 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 written across it. You can probably see that. You maybe can't. Got a little closer. There you go. Um, thanks for joining us. It's, uh, it's holiday season. And uh, here we are in the, in the SDVOE house. Um, and today, uh, leveraging uh, fiber optics in Pro AV. In a moment, we're going to take a little look at the, uh, the video that Gary has put together. We've got Gary on the show here as well today. So as Justin just said, Please do get those questions in on the chat or via the, the hashtag SDVOE Live. We'd love to hear from you um, uh, because you know, the special guest is the guru of fiber. And, uh, and speaking of which, uh, from my own experience, really, in AV over the last 20 years, uh, fiber optics has, that used to be that scary thing, right? They used to have a lab coat uh, and it was, it was frighteningly dangerous um, and expensive and only a few people did it. But um, as, as, we've, as we're growing, uh, bandwidth is growing and growing, we're getting more and more of it. In fact, some of the new, news items today, we're talking about bandwidth uh, and, and the increase of bandwidth across uh, the wide area network. So um, it's, it's, it's really upon us. And fiber optic cabling has certainly kept up with the flow in terms of making it so much easier to terminate. Uh, it's so much more accessible. It's in line um, financially with, with, with its copper variants. Uh, but it's just so much more future ready. And I use the term future ready, people, because I hate the term future proof. We, none of us have got these little um, glass balls that we can see the future. But certainly with fiber optics, it's, it's the, it's the go-to now for the increase in, in, uh, in, in bandwidth. Um, and what we're going to see now is, is, is Gary just giving us uh, the, the first module that we've posted up on Academy, uh, which is introducing you to the benefits of using fiber. So without any further ado, let's take a look at this. Hello, and welcome to our introduction to fiber optics, the first in a series of modules intended to help you become comfortable with the understanding, specifying, and installing of fiber. 
My name's Gary Vlamink, and I oversee the training and certification initiatives at Clearline Technology Group. Fiber optics has been around for decades, with a proven reputation for reliability, the ability to stand the test of time, as well as the evolution of technology. In the next few minutes, I'll explain the key benefits to using fiber instead of traditional infrastructure products such as category cable. We'll also see why fiber is now relevant to the AV industry and as a medium to transport in data over that all important physical layer of any IP based infrastructure. We'll talk more about the different types of fiber in module two. In the meantime, here are a couple of interesting little facts about fiber. Multimode fiber can transmit 100 gigabits of data per second up to approximately 150 meters or 500 feet. That's 100 times 10 to the power 9 bits per second, or the number 100 with nine zeros after it, bits per second. Single mode fiber can theoretically transmit 1.2 petabits of data per second up to an indefinite distance. That's 1.2 times 10 to the power 15. Or 1.2 with 14 zeros after it, bits per second. With these capabilities, fiber can transmit more data over longer distances and at far greater speeds than any other medium we know of. Just as importantly, the latency in time between transmitting and receiving that data is almost zero. A critical element to t uh, traditional networks as well as voice over IP systems. Unlike copper and other types of medium, fiber has no metallic or electrically conductive components to it. This makes fiber immune to things like power surges, EMI, RFI, ground loop interference, and lightning strikes. It also means it won't corrode over time. Fiber and the components that connect to the ends of it have also come way down in price. To give a comparison, the types of fiber generally used to connect two IP switches together is called a duplex fiber. We'll discuss that in more detail in the next module. A thousand foot of, or 305 meters of this particular fiber is now roughly the same price as a spool of good quality Cat 6A shielded. Most people don't realize that fiber is considerably lighter in weight than twisted pair, making it much easier to handle. A thousand foot, 305 meters of shielded Cat 6 is approximately 50 pounds or 23 kilos with a diameter of around eight millimeters or quarter inch. The equivalent length of fiber weighs around seven pounds or just three kilograms, depending on the strand count and is only three millimeters in diameter. Fiber is also a lot more durable than in past years. In fact, the technology built into Clearline fiber not only makes it stronger than any twisted pair cable, but it also makes it easier to terminate than category cable. Given a little practice, an end-to-end -end clear line fiber can be successfully terminated in about a minute. From an AV perspective, today's HDMI specification 2.0 calls for 18 gigabit per second data throughput. The new spec, HDMI 2.1, calls for 48 gigabit in order to accommodate all of the cool new features such as enhanced high definition audio, frame by frame high dynamic range, and the deeper brighter colors we see today. Discussions of, the, of this going into 178.2 uh, gigabit in the coming generations of HDMI are already in place. These talk about 10K resolutions at 120 Hz refresh rates with 444 color sampling and 16 bit color depths with virtual reality. CAT6A cannot transmit data beyond 10.2 gigabit per second at its maximum rated frequency of 500 megahertz. And therefore, all systems using category cable must compress the signal down to at least 10.2 gig in order to com be compatible with an 18 gig source and content. If you need to deliver today's 4K with HDR over more than just a few meters, fiber really is your best solution. My sweater is better than yours. Uh, that may or may not be true, and I'm sure many would disagree. 
Uh, right. But look at you what we be, got here. You be the judge, people. Right. Um, Tim, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Tom, Michael, Matthias, James, thank you all for being here, giving us your answers, some good answers there. Can you please just tell us via the tweet, the Twitter or, or the chat, just tell us who's got the best apparel? Because I think it's me. These are red these are red velvet slippers just so we're just so we're holiday clear you look a bit like rupert bear that's lost you on make me, isn't these it? british c-list uh, celebrity references that, that producer mean paul to producer paul he doesn't Devin even know who, it doesn't even know who rupert bear is producer paul producer paul's in the back there he's looking at me in just absolute disgust how are you sir he anyway. was the 19 the 1978 Southwest Midlands Billiards Champion, and we're supposed to know that. <laughs> and the rain came down. Rupert Bear. I've just got, I just can't stop giggling there. Rupert Bear was a 1978 Billiards Champ. That is awesome. How are you, sir? You good? <laughs> good. Good. I'm very, very good. Did, I had did a you have a nice set? Did you have? You did as did, well. Yes, I did. It was a very uh, quiet, lazy one with. Uh, I'm uh, trying to think which. Uh, who was it? Uh, oh yeah, with my wife um, and my two children. Um, oh, her and them. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm sticking on two. You went three. <laughs> you went three kids, people. Madness. So it's your first Christmas with the three, the three chilies. Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, I started drinking wine early. Uh, yes, I was you did. building Legos till late. It was a, it was a delightful experience would you, uh, for uh, all involved, especially me. Would you care to, to tell the viewers? Just what time you started no. drinking wine? Uh, well, in what time zone? No, I would not. No. Well, if you want to know people, <coughs> you know where to go. <laughs> Find us on hashtag SDVOE Live. Brilliant. Um, should we do some news? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, well, the first news item I'm going to uh, throw into the mix is, um, is, is the whole cable network getting ready for 10 gig, all right? Love this. This is this is fantastic. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kiss ass a little bit now because this is good news for us, right? In SDVOE, this is this is the right move. All along, we've always said, um, you know, we'll take a punt on bandwidth. Those of you that have, you know, head into the academy, have a wander around, check out the Codec Triangle course because it's it's a really great representation uh, about um, how we utilise late how we refer to latency, quality, and bandwidth, right? there's always going to be a trade-off. If you start compressing and compromising uh, the video, then there's going to be a trade-off. You can't have it every way. Uh, and, and, and we, within this technology at SDVO, we, we took the punt on bandwidth. Bandwidth is going up. Moore's Laws told us that. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago. I remember, JK, when I first I got my first PC, uh, and I had, um, I had a, a 14400 14, um, modem are connected to the phone line 1400 modem, which you know a lot of us probably had. And I'm not that old, um, but now all of a sudden, you know, we're talking about say, getting I, into. I remember upgrading to 14.4. Well, there you go. Hold on a minute. I've got about three <laughs> years on you. So how's that possible? You started young, man. Um, uh, yeah. But anyway, so th this whole concept of you know moving uh, the WAN into into the world of 10 gig. Check out the check out the, the news article. It's it's fascinating. You, th th there's a link here. Uh, just just over here on, on the left, just go and just make sure the link's there. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely, definitely there, okay. yeah. So click the link, uh, it's really interesting. It goes into some quite technical granular detail about, uh, about how they're making this work. But nonetheless, well worth a click. What was your takeaway from it, Justin? I think, I think the story here is just the, the reminder that, that bandwidth is always going up, right? Think back 20 years ago when we were just getting broadband at home and, and a megabit DSL connection was a big deal. And now here we are, gigabit is pretty easy to find uh, to the home. And now we're, we're looking into 10 gig cable TV networks. Mm. Um, what I thought was more interesting is sort of a, and a segue into the next article, though, uh, is if, if we've got 10 gig to every home, what in the world do we do for those backhauls? How do we, how do we have you know, hundreds or thousands of homes in a, in a neighborhood and a town connected at this rate? Uh, so I don't know how many times I have to say segue before Matt will click the button. Um, but uh, this say next it again. article. About say it again. Say it again. <laughs> this next article, and, and a beautiful, beautiful segue this could have been, oh, uh, about yeah. 800 gigabits 
through a single optical fiber, right? This is, this is about those backhaul networks. Uh, this particular experiment was, was 800 gigabits through a live commercial operation fiber in a real network uh, running from San Diego to Phoenix. Uh, and, and a single fiber in this link was some 950 kilometers running 800 gigabits of data through it. Uh, just sort of amazing where, where we are in, in pushing Ethernet technology and, and this transport technology to its real speed limits. Just think about how quickly you, you could. Uh, gigs, Matt? Just think about how quickly you could go around Academy and, and look at the look at the content on Academy. You could have it done within about fifteen minutes. It'd be brilliant. How quickly I could change a slide. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's the holiday season. I'm on triple time here, fella. So don't don't uh, don't get too, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get too heavy. No, it's incredible. And I'd actually be really keen to to, to hear what Gary's got to say about this. He'll probably be. Uh, pontificating about it, saying, I told you so, it's the future. He's around here somewhere. I don't, I don't know where he is. He's, he's, we'll, we'll see him in a moment, but he's definitely around here. Speaking I think of, Gar speaking Gar of segues, let's... Uh, well, let's just see if he's a... Gary, are you... You're nearly ready, yeah? You've got, you, get out. No, you've got to leave Gary, the dressing room, here? Gary. He's in the dressing room. He's, he's, in the dress the TV. he's in the dressing room. He's playing with his white kittens. Gary, we, we need you, buddy. We, we need you. Are you ready? Yeah, let's see where he is. Is he here? Ah, oh, there he is. Beautiful. Hello, Look Gary. This. I told you these big Hello, screens Matt. would be worth it one day. Did I not tell you that, Matt? I told you. You did. You did. They were expensive, but hey, look. Look at that. Uh, Gary in full Technicolor. Where are you, Gary? I'm in Pennsylvania. Ah, oh, a beautiful state. A big state. Oh, what For a those state. of you that don't know what that is, it's just west of New York, in the US of A. It's a long, long way away from me, Justin, that's for sure. Well, it's only, only up there, I suppose. Uh, and what's the weather like there, Gaza? Is it a uh, bit chilly, a bit snowy? Not really. It's actually surprisingly warm, which is nice. Wow. Uh, global, global change, global climate. Yeah, but we did have some snow last week, though, so, yep, it is definitely winter. Because didn't they have something stupid like six foot of snow in, in New York State? Not that long ago, or five foot of snow. There was a, there was a, somebody, somebody sent me a link with a with a, a guy who 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 was who had a, a flamethrower. Just only that could only produce a pool that could only ever happen in the states, right? Only in the states. We have shovels and spades over here. No, no, no. We we use a bit of elbow grease like that over here. Take a long time. Gary, I've got a question for you. Oh, by the way, well I've done on the video. On. That was a really good video. Um, it, I, I don't know who the production team were that put it all together for you, but they are, they are pretty damn good. So, uh, so, so credit to them, Clavier Group, www.claviergroup.com. Um, Gary, oh, question for you. Don't single forget mode... to plug the book. <laughs> oh, I'll go and get it. Uh, single mode, multi-mode. Um, the, the, the single mode stuff, the single mode cable is, is, is cheaper, right? Um, a multi-mode endpoint, the, the end connectors are cheaper. What's your recommendation for, for sort of now moving forward for people? You know, people have put multi-mode in now, multi-mode, as you guys say over there in the, uh, in the States. Um, people are putting multi-mode in thinking, hold on a minute, should I have been putting single mode in? What's your, uh, what, what's your sort of response to that? What advice would you give them? No, for the purposes of, of our industry, multi-mode is just fine, to be quite frank. Um, you know, multi-mode, we can get 10 gig up to 1,000, 1,300 feet, all right? Um, single mode is really used for between buildings, uh, down the street. You, you're looking at, you know, 100 gig up to 10, 20, 30 kilometers. Um, so that, that's really what they use for the long haul stuff. As far as our industry is concerned, multi-mode is preferred, in fact, because when it comes to things like um, video over fiber, uh, it's much easier for the manufacturers of the endpoints to be able to manage that, 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 um, that light and be able to transmit and receive video over fiber uh, much more inexpensively than they would otherwise. Uh, right. If you're trying to do that down a piece of single mode, um, while it's possible, uh, it does become more expensive. So, uh, you know, we, we talk about fiber. You, you correctly mentioned earlier, Matt, that uh, the disparity in price between uh, fiber and copper is becoming more and more reduced as time goes on. And that's true. Um, and that's largely in part as a result of people being able to do some things with multi-mode fiber. So multi-mode within, within premise, um, you know, is, is just fine. Sure. And you guys at Clearline are doing some amazing that, stuff, really, to, 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 uh, to really help these guys adopt the stuff, right? Sorry, Justin, what were you going to say? 
Let's say, is that something that's that's changing? Uh, is single mode becoming more? Is it making inroads to the smaller scale system as as, as maybe optic prices come down? Is that happening, or uh, is, is there a it, it transition happening. coming in the future? No, it right. is definitely happening, and it's a supply and demand thing, to be honest. I mean, when you're talking about basic FFPs, the small format pluggable devices that go into the back of network switches, um, you know, there's really not much difference today. Uh, between a single mode SFP and a multi mode SFP. But when you talk about more specialist equipment like video over fiber and things like that, there are more and more manufacturers out there now which are, are manufacturing uh, devices that can do this for us. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we are beginning to see that price disparity come down between single mode and multi mode endpoints. Um, but for the most part, at this point in time, multi mode is the preferred, uh, you know, equipment used. Gary, um, Tim, just, by the way, Tim, to thank me as I was, sorry, sorry, carry on. That, it, a new idea that occurred to me as I was, as I was watching the, the intro video for the nth time um, is the idea that, you know, you talked about single mode fiber supporting, what, 1.2 petabits or something in theory? Um, yeah. With these other technologies, with multimode, but especially with cat cable, right? With cat cable, we're constantly sort of chasing more bandwidth, right? Every few years we go cat 3, cat 5, cat 6, cat 7. Uh, as as those needs for bandwidth increase, right? And that brings with it that fundamental infrastructure challenge of like, when do I finally rip my old wires out of the wall and put new wires in, right? And single mode gives you this very different sort of, I don't know, not problem space, optimization space, right? Where you now your infrastructure is sort of almost permanent. I, I, I won't say future proof in front of Matt, but... Um, <laughs> But almost permanent. You're not chasing more bandwidth. You're just, you know, upgrading those end devices or, or seeing the price of those end devices come down. Hopefully, anyway, it's just sort of a something that popped into my head is how different that is to to the rest of infrastructure. No, well, it's very true. You know, you're you're absolutely right, Justin. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, you know, what how how long do you want that infrastructure to to last? Um, you know, I mean, because with multi-mode fiber. I mean, like I said, you, you can do 10 gig, you can do actually up to 100 gig over sort of 500 feet. All right. So that's a fairly decent length run of, say, HDMI. Um, so, you know, for, to get 100, 100 gig over 500 feet over multi-mode fiber, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not going to come close to any, anywhere close to that right. for a long time, considering, and you know, then, we use... Com more compare that to a cat cable. I, I, exactly, exactly. But you, you're absolutely correct. I've, I've got dealers around the world who have requested you know, uh, we make a cable for them that has both single mode and multi-mode fiber in it. Um, so that they're utilizing the multi-mode infrastructure at this point, but they've got single mode strands in there should they need them in the future. So absolutely, you know, as, as, as uh, supply and demand uh, dictates, we're, we're going to see this disparity in price and, and such, you know, come down. Gary, I, I'm going to ask a question, um, which I think we spoke about some time ago, probably when we were um, recovering in, a, in a Las Vegas uh, hotel somewhere. Uh, remember those days, people, <laughs> when we could go somewhere? Uh, uh, hey, Justin, maybe should we should set up a, a Vegas casino in, in our SDVOE building. But uh, um, we, I, I talked about the, the, this whole weird concept of the fiber optic cable having uh, been sh surrounded with some sort of uh, conductor which will allow a fiber endpoint to then carry PoE, for example, because you can't carry power over the fiber. So I mean, is, is that still a bit of a pipe dream? Is there anything happening with that? Is there any need for it? As a matter of fact, it is, Matt, yes. Um, yes, there, there is some, uh, there's definitely some development on some technology uh, that is looking at ways to accommodate both power and data as well, mm. uh, with the data going down the, uh, down the fiber. And, and of course, you know, we've got to facilitate power somehow, mm. uh, not over the glass itself, because mm. I think at that point, if we were able to transmit power over glass and through light, um, we might all be walking around with microwave brains at that point. Um, but certainly, yeah, uh, we, are looking, we are looking at technology that uh, can facilitate both uh, power and data. And, you know, we already made kind of a hybrid cable where we've got kind of like a duplex, um, you know, where we have two strands of fiber in one jacket and, and two strands of, uh, of twisted pair, or not twisted pair, but twisted copper conductors in another jacket for so, uh, things like POE and CCTV cameras. Cool. Gary, um, bless you. Thank you. So we, we, we are running out of time um, and we don't want you stealing the show because you're doing a pretty good job of that so far. Isn't he wonderful? Uh, Tim, we're going to bring the old point about the 10K Res 16 bit colour. We're going to bring that into the after show. So st stay tuned. Uh, but for now, Gary, we're going to, uh, we're just going to ask you to, well, just to go away while we bring up another quiz question. So check out the quiz question. Here it comes.
Oh, isn't he lovely? That question was sort of, he's great. He's great. I'm glad to have him here and glad we'll chat with him in a minute. But I was going to say that question was kind of vicious, right? You, was... I think it's answered in part three of Gary's uh, fiber optic course here here in the SDVOE yeah. Academy. So Gotta stick around and watch this again later and then tweet us your answer tomorrow. Got to um, keep them on the toes. I, I hope that somebody out there knows it. Let's okay, Tempest Fugit. So uh, let's just take a look at those quiz questions that we, we laid out. What you, we, the Royal We. Uh, the two quiz questions that you popped up there, Justin. Um, here they are. Uh, what is thinner? Which is, which is a thinner? Uh, the single mode or, or, or multi mode? Or multi mode, as we say. Did here anyone in the get UK. this? Anyone get this? It is, well, hold, it hold is a single yeah. mode. Yeah, we have got. Oh, oh, oh yeah. spoiler alert. Oh, no, update contact. Uh, Check the timestamps. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, Tim got it. Well done, Tim. Tim Haberdank. Single mode, Tom got it, single. Right. Oh, these guys are all over it, Justin. This is too easy. Uh, Michael, well, he's that was put the easy one. Mode. How are we doing on question number two? J J James has put, come on, give us something that's, that's, that's challenging on my 14th gin and tonic. Um, so, second question. Uh, Tom says, because POE makes a lot of things so easy and convenient. Oh, yeah, that was probably from the, the last thing we did. Light loss. Yeah. Uh, and then somebody oh, else has oh, put oh, something up. That, that's a. That was a correct well, yeah. answer. Who was that? It is a correct answer. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 use, the, you use the A word, which is, a, you know, attenuation. Uh, so. that, I was referring to, I was referring, oh, attenuation. I no, thought, don't be mean. You were talking about when we were no. speaking yesterday. No, 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 don't be mean. Don't be mean. So, uh, so well done, Tom. Tom. I think Tom's the winner here. Tom, Tom smash this, Justin. Congratulations, Send him Tom. loads of money. Congratulations, Tom. We'll Do you want loads of money, ton, Tom? A ton. You want loads of money. Oh. Just say, yeah, give me money. I don't hear anything. Right. I guess, I guess not. Yeah, absolutely. So don't forget, people. Um, SDV hashtag SDVOE live. Get your comments. Get your thoughts in there. Send them over to us. Uh, and don't forget that we've got the after show coming up very, very soon. Uh, but before we do that, we need to uh, we need to tell you what's going to happen in the next episode. It's 2021. The next episode. Uh, the year we got rid of COVID. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Just hoping. <laughs> Tell us what's um, happening next time, Justin. All, this will be all about high dynamic range imaging, HDR, and, and how that fits in our world of HDMI and AV over IP. Uh, our guest will be Stefan Tremblay, uh, who is the CTO of, of products for Semtech, who builds some of the core technology for SDVOE. Uh, so there's really no better person to, to get us straight on HDR and, and what that means for us. Uh, if you missed any of this show or if you want to watch it again, uh, everything we do here is, is available on demand, uh, both here in the SDVOE Academy uh, as well as on the SDVOE Alliance YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. So check out the archive there uh, and watch us on demand. Stefan's very, very clever, by the way, so we might need a translator for that one because he's, whoa, you're going to love that. Uh, right, stay tuned for the after show, people, but it's been emotional. It's been wonderful. Thank you for being with us again, and we'll see you very shortly for the after show, won't we, Jason? Jason, Justin. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No problem, Bye. Michael. <laughs>